Let us pray. Gracious Lord, take our hands and lead, lead us home. Lead us to the place where we will see your glory. Lead us to a, to a place where there will be no barriers. There will be no left and right or center. But there will be people rejoicing because they are in the presence of their shepherd. Lead us this evening as we reflect, we reflect on your words. And may your word be the lamp to our feet. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I would like to start by telling you a story. A story of a young girl by the name of Shema. At the age of 18, life had opened up before Shema. She had just graduated from high school, where she was considered as a role model student, and who had just won a scholarship from the school board for social commitment and academic achievement. Not only that, she was good in sports too. But one evening, under the pretext of an evening out with friends, Shema had left home and never returned. Few days after, a family learned that she was on her way to Syria to join the Jihadis movement in Syria. A parent were not Islamic extremist. A parent did not agree with the Jihadis practices. So they were confused why their daughter who has just finished high school, who just got a scholarship, who was very good at sport, could live that kind of life and go join the Jihadist group in Syria. They did not understand what was happening. All their dreams were shattered. But later on, they found out that the Sunday school that their daughter was part of was led by a controversial Iman or a controversial leader by the name of Iman Adil. It was through that group that Shena and other young people started to embrace the extremist ideology. And this Iman was not stranger to headlines in Canada. He was under the watch of the secret services who were suspecting that he could be a member of Al-Qaeda. It came clear that Iman Adil was the one who had saw in Shemna's heart the Jaidi's ideology which had led Shemna to join the Islamist State of Syria's group. Iman Adil was Shemna's shepherd. He was a shepherd of many young people But I don't know what kind of a shepherd that man was. On one thing I know that he had influence on those young people. He had transformed those people's hearts and lead them to somewhere. 
as the shepherd always do with the sheep. The shepherd leads the sheep somewhere. And that is what this man did. I don't know if we can say that or we can call him as a good shepherd. I don't know if he's an inspiring shepherd or he's just a predator who took advantage of young people and led them to something else. Jesus, through the gospel, according to John, describes himself as a good shepherd. Not just a shepherd, but he said, I am the good, the good shepherd. Meaning that there were other shepherds around there, but Jesus was different from them because he was a good shepherd. So I would like to invite us to reflect tonight about what it means to be a good shepherd. Not just a shepherd, but a good shepherd. John has done a very good job, not by just saying Jesus did, did, did describe himself as a good shepherd, but he explained what Jesus meant by being a good shepherd. The first thing that John gave us is that, he said, a good shepherd is ready to give his life for those in his care. A good shepherd is ready to lay down his life for the people who are under his care. A good shepherd must brave the high mountains and cheers the valleys in the heat of the day for the welfare of the flock. That is what it means to lay his life for his sheep. Putting his life on the line for those in his care. Jesus did that by carrying his own cross up to Golgotha. Jesus did that on the cross where he suffered humiliation and death so that the sheep can have life and not only life life abundant in, in abundance the question for us tonight is for whom or for what cause are we ready to lay down our lives i am not expecting us to just go out there and ask someone to kill us, to shoot us so that, and we say, I lay down my life for the people. That is not what I mean by to lay down our lives. But what I mean is, laying down our lives is, when we see people struggling with loneliness, we take our time and go be with them. We lay down our lives for someone who is in need of comfort. What I mean is when we see people who are voiceless and whenever they speak, people can't hear them. For us who have that opportunity for people to hear us, we join them so that we make their voice heard. That is to lay down our voices. Our, our lives by there I mean when we see people who are struggling who haven't eaten anything for days to share the little we have with them that is what it means to lay down our lives Jesus did that he fed those who didn't have food he gives sight to those who could not see. He cleans the lepers so that they could go back and be part of the community. He did lay down his life for them. He gave them hope for a new future. And that is what we need to do. To give people around us hope. That is what laying down our lives mean.
as a good shepherd, we are called. get out of our comfort zone and that is when it becomes a bit difficult because no one likes to get out of their comfort zone we want to feel comforted we want to feel safe we want to feel that ah this is where i belong but as a good shepherd we are asked even to get out of that comforting zone so that we can embrace the margin who lives around us. The second thing that John is playing about being a good shepherd is the good shepherd knows his sheep and they know him. It is a mutual knowledge. It's not only Jesus who knows them, but them also, they know Jesus. Knowing, on one hand, means to be able to identify without any prejudice who the other person is. But on the other hand, knowing means to recognize in the other person something that is special about them. They know Jesus and Jesus knows them. My dear church, let me tell you that we are both. We are the shepherd and at the same time, time we are the sheep. People can identify to which flock we belong by our words, by our actions, by the kind of things that we post even on Facebook, people can identify on what kind of flock we belong. And as shepherd, people can identify what kind of shepherd we are by the things that we support, by the policies that we support, by the kind of ideology that we support, by how tolerant we are to those who are different from us, by how welcoming we are to those who don't share the same ideology as us, how willing we are in sharing a worshiping, worshiping space with those who don't agree with our theologies. In those kind of things, people will know what kind of shepherd we are. If we are a good shepherd or not. This Iman Adil, I don't think that he was a good shepherd. Because of his ideology, because of what he did to those young people. Instead of leading them, as Psalm 23 said, to the green and pastures, he led them to destruction. Laying down his life for his flock and creating a relationship where the flock knows the shepherd and the shepherd knows them can only be possible where there is love. You can't get out of your comfort zone if there is no love. You can't be a good shepherd if you don't have love. 
So love is the key for one to be a good shepherd. And my favorite theologian, I always tell people, if I did leave at the time when Bon Arthur was there, I would have done my best to be his closest friend. Because I agree with a lot of things that Bon Arthur did and wrote. So Bon Arthur explained that there are two kinds of love. There is what he calls or refers to as human love and divine love. This is what he says about human love. He said, human love is directed to the other person for his own sake. It seeks direct contact with the other person. It loves him not as a free person, but as one whom it binds to itself. Human love wants to gain. It captures by every means. It uses force sometimes. It desires to, to be ir irresistible to the rules. Human love makes itself an end in itself. That is when you hear someone say, I am now out of love. I don't love my husband anymore. I don't love my spouse anymore. I don't love my boyfriend anymore. Because whatever you, you were expecting to get in that relationship, in that love, you don't get it anymore. You are out of love. And that is what human love is. And shepherd, some shepherd in times of Jesus, use human love to attract people to them. Use human love so that the sheep could follow them and so that they could manipulate the sheep to what they wanted. Bonafa went on by saying, Human love sometimes, it is a transactional love. You need something so that that love can grow. With that, that something, that love will never grow and it's going to fade. That is what he said. Because in that love, two people seek to gain something from one another. And that is what this Iman Adil did. He showed that he did love those young people and attract them to him so that he could use them for his own personal gain. And he led many young people like Shemai to destruction. We have she such shepherds who are animated by human love. What they do is to sow hatred in people's hearts. And what is even scary, sometimes they use the name of God to spread hatred among people. They incite people to violence. They incite people to kill those who do not pray the same way like them. Those who, not, who don't believe, who don't do things the same way as them. Human love creates a situation of them and us. There's no shepherd who's supposed to bring the sheep together who can do that when they have human love. Because the lives of the sheep are not important to such shepherds who are there for something. Such shepherds are selfish. 
in everything that they do. And it's even hard for me to refer to them as shepherd. The right name for me will be predator. Because the good shepherd does not put himself at the service of ideology. A good shepherd does not put himself at the service of blue or red. A, blue, a good shepherd does not put himself at the service of progressive or traditionalist or conservative. That is what those who are animated by human love do. A good shepherd love with divine love. Love that free people from bondage. Love that breaks cultural barriers. Love, love that breaks social political barriers. And Bonhoeffer says divine love does not desire but rather serves. It is a love from above, a, myst a mystery, something completely strange, new. I've heard people saying, I don't know why I, I was attracted to love these people who don't speak the same language as me, who don't eat the same food as me. But when I see them going through these kind of things, I say I'm going to stand there for them and I'm going to speak for them because it's divine love. It's a mystery. And that the love that the shepherd had. With that, that love, you'll never be a good shepherd. Unfortunately, many shepherds nowadays are rooted in human love. In the love of ideologies. In a patriotic love. I'm red. I'm blue. I don't care about anything else. And the violence, the civil wars, and hatred that we are seeing in our world today, it is the result of being led by shepherds who have human love, who are rooted in human love. But the word of God has come to us this evening as it came to Ezekiel saying, Son of man, prophesize against the shepherd of Israel. Prophesize and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. This part, I like the the message translation which says, <laughs> Doom to you, shepherd of Israel. Why? Because you don't take care of the sheep. You take care of yourself. Should not the shepherd take care of the flock? You eat the curbs. Clothe yourself with wolves. And slaughter the choice animals. But you do not take care of them. There is a tale. That in the first century. A man came to. Tertullian. A father in the early church. And in trying to justify some compromises, the man had felt he had to make, commented, I have to leave, don't I? 
to which the Tillion is reported to have said, do you? The challenge is to focus away from self and to others. To ask where our real values are survival only or living us make a difference. Leo Tolstoy said, the only certain happiness in life, the only certain happiness in life is to live for others. Is to live for others. It is when we see the world with a large level than self. It is when we become con concerned with with others that we found the deep of God's love for our lives. What kind of a good shepherd are you? What kind of a good shepherd I am if I don't have concerns about what is going on around? If I don't go on my knees and ask God, where do you want us to go as a nation? What kind of a shepherd I am when every day when you follow the news, there's just violence after violence. And we said, it's not my fault. What should I do? What kind of a shepherd, a good shepherd? Am I going to be if I just don't care? To which flock do I belong? To which flock do I belong? The one that embraces hatred. The one that doesn't see anything wrong in violence, in gang violence, to be precise. The one that doesn't see anything in racism. Or do we belong to Jesus' flock? where we are inspired by divine love and where we see something that is wrong and we say God this is wrong and we don't want this in our society through divine love we can transcend the political divide we can rise above cultural barriers and we will go we will be good shepherd like our Lord Jesus Christ I'm going to invite us this evening to embrace divine love. Divine love frees people from cultural barriers, from political barriers, so that they can be free and embrace God and make their community to be a better community than what it is now. May the Lord help us to embrace divine love so that we can be the good shepherd or so that we can belong to the flock that is led by Jesus. Amen.